Hi, my name's Nick and welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the effectiveness of our 11 kilowatt solar edge system that we purchased from and had installed by Solar Titan USA. We recently put up a video that showed the installation and the several problems we've had with the system so far, so if you haven't already, go ahead and check out that video. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that video right here, as well as one in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and start by showing you some video that shows the positioning of the sun throughout the day, as well as the amount of solar power that the panels on the roof are producing. This footage was actually filmed on the fall equinox, so hopefully that'll give a pretty good median data point over the course of the year as far as solar production is concerned. Our home does get a lot of direct sunlight, but we also live on a farm in the middle of the woods. The sun began to creep up around 8.30 a.m. and the panels were producing just under half a kilowatt. You can see that the panels were well lit, but not getting much direct sunlight. At 10 a.m., the sun was fully visible and giving the panels significantly more energy, 4.76 kilowatts. The sun was almost directly above our house at noon, which allowed the panels to produce 7.6 kilowatts of energy. At 2 p.m., the sun was starting its descension and giving us a little more than the last time we checked, 7.86 kilowatts. We were still getting some decent sunlight at 4 p.m., but the energy production dropped to 5.64 kilowatts. The sun was hidden by the trees by 7.30 and we were producing absolutely no power from the panels. Overall, that particular day, we produced 55.6 kilowatt hours and we consumed a total of 80.2 kilowatt hours. We only imported 38.3 kilowatt hours from the grid and sent back 13.6 kilowatt hours when we were actually producing more than we were consuming. Our electric company does something called net metering, which means that for every kilowatt hour we send them when we overproduce, they give us a credit for one kilowatt hour. So that means for this 24 hour period, we should actually only be charged for 24.7 kilowatt hours. When you do the math, you'll show that this solar system gave us an offset of about 69.2% of our total consumption for the day. When we bought our system they promised us 70 to 90 percent on average and I guess that's pretty close. We have had better days than that. So far after having the system operational for 10 days the absolute best day we had we produced 60.3 kilowatt hours while consuming 60.4 kilowatt hours. 99.8 percent is a pretty darn good offset. The main reason for this drop in consumption is the fact that the weather is starting to cool off and our air conditioner hasn't needed to run nearly as often. On our farm, we don't have natural gas or propane, so our home is heated with electricity as well. We'll definitely be sharing more data with you this winter to show the offset we have during the colder months. We haven't really formed a solid opinion of solar just yet. The reason for that is the discrepancies we're seeing in our meter versus the Solar Edge monitoring app. We've been going outside every night at midnight to take a picture of our meter so that we can see what our usage is in a 24-hour period the same period that the Solar Edge app uses. We want to make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Right before filming this video, I made a spreadsheet to capture all of the data that we have. Let's take a look at that right now. It shows the meter reading and usage for each day. It also has what Solar Edge shows we imported, exported, our total consumption, and solar production. We also have it calculate what our net usage is from the grid after subtracting the credits we should receive. The last column shows the discrepancy from our meter and the electricity imported according to the Solar Edge app. Those are some pretty big differences. That's a difference of 30 kilowatt hours per day. That means that if we're being charged based on the meter readings versus what the Solar Edge app shows that we're actually taking from the grid, we're going to be charged over $100 a month more than we should. $1,200 a year is a pretty substantial chunk of change. Hopefully there's a really good explanation for this and we'll actually be charged accurately on our next electric bill. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because we will be giving an update in about three weeks or so when we get that next bill. Please comment below if you have any theories or maybe you have a solar system and you can better explain this for us. We look forward to reading all those comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.